Hey guys, it's David from TheUnlocker.com. Today we're going to do part two on creating your own custom ROM for Android. Uh, the part one was actually setting up the Android kitchen. Part two is going to be actually creating your very first ROM. So here's all the fun stuff. Uh, so if you're not already there, head over to TheUnlocker.com, spell like that in the address bar, and search for how to create your own custom ROM for Android part two. Okay, a few things before we begin. Uh, we're assuming that you've already set up the Android kitchen uh, using our how to set up the kitchen procedure or part one. Uh, if you haven't, there's a link here in the first uh, step. Click on that, do all of that, and then come back to this and we can continue. Next thing before we begin, this only works for HTC Android devices at the moment. Uh, the creator of this kitchen says he might be working on uh, allowing other devices as well, but in the meantime right now it only works on HTC devices. Just so you know, the majority of this stuff is going to be done inside the Ubuntu virtual machine or if you already have Ubuntu, like on a regular machine, just use that. Um, so when I say stuff like save it to your computer or virtual machine, not on your Windows machine. Okay, so how this kitchen works is you take a already made ROM, whether it's a custom ROM or a ROM from the manufacturer or shipped ROM, um, and then we're going to alter it with what we want to change in it and then repackage it, that way we can flash it. So the easiest way to do this is to take a custom ROM that's in an update.zip format. You can also use shipped ROMs, um, but it's a little more complicated. You can read the instructions below on the site. Um, you basically have to extract two .img files and then save them into your kitchen's .img files folder, and then we can go from there. Um, but for this video and for, for ease of what probably most people are gonna do, we'll show you how to do it with a custom ROM because it's just a lot faster and simpler. Um, so, what you're going to do is, in your Ubuntu virtual machine, like I have here since I'm running Windows on my computer, or in your Ubuntu computer, we're going to open up Firefox by clicking on the Firefox button at the top, and then you can go to our site, and then click on the Downloads link at the top. After you click on Downloads, you're going to scroll down, and you'll see Android. Click on that. Then scroll down and click on ROMs. And then you're gonna choose whatever phone it is you're using. Again, remember, this only really works on HTC devices. Um, so for me, I'm gonna use the G1. So we'll click on that. And then pick one of these ROMs that you wanna alter and make your own. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom here, and I'll use the very last one, which is an Eclair-based ROM. So now it takes me to that developer's page. I'm gonna look for a ROM file. So here's the one I'm gonna use. I'm gonna click on that, tell it to save. Click OK and wait for that to download. Okay, so now that we've saved the ROM that we want into our Ubuntu virtual machine, we're going to click on Places, Home Folder, Download, which is where Firefox saves stuff, and you'll see the .zip, the ROM that we downloaded. We're going to Control C to copy it. Click our Home Folder at the top here. And then you will see an original Update folder. Click on that. Right click and hit paste, and it should save the .zip file into this folder. Okay, now if you haven't had it already open, we're going to go to Applications, Accessories, Terminal, and we're going to type dot slash menu, and this opens our Android kitchen, assuming that we followed the instructions correctly in part one to set up the kitchen. Okay, next thing we need to do is we need to set up a working folder. Basically, we need to dissect and extract the ROM that we downloaded earlier uh, so that we can alter what we want inside of it, then repack it and make it our own ROM. So, since it's a cooked ROM and not a stock ROM, you'll see that advanced options 11, set up a working folder from the cooked ROM. So it says, please enter option number. I'm gonna hit 11 and hit enter. It's gonna give me a little warning and press enter again. And now it's inflating all of the uh, files. At the very end it's going to say enter to continue. Press that. It brings us back to our menu. Okay, now this next part is uh, tweaking the imported ROM using automated options in the kitchen. This is pretty self-explanatory. Basically just select the options that you want to add to this ROM. So for example, I want root permissions. I'm going to push 2, hit enter. Basically just follow the prompts until you're back to the menu. Okay. Uh, and you do the same for any other options that you might like, uh, enabling apps to SD, uh, add wireless tethering, etc. So do all those, add whatever it is you want, um, and then we can go to the next step. Okay, now the next thing we can do um, is we can add or remove applications from the ROM. So to do that, we're going to go leave the terminal open. We're going to click Places, 
home folder. And then you'll see the working folder. It's usually entitled working and then the date and I think that's the time. So we're gonna double click that to open that. Then system app. And in here is gonna be all the .apk files for all of the apps that are pre-installed in the ROM. So you can simply delete any of these if you don't want them in the ROM. You can also download uh, any APK files from Firefox and copy them into this folder if you want them added into the ROM. Okay, again, this is optional. If you just want to leave it the way it is, then just leave it the way it is. Then we can go to our next step. Okay, once you've made all the changes that you want, uh, the very last thing you need to do is you need to repackage the ROM so that it can be flashed onto a phone. Pretty easy to do that. You'll see option number 99 is build ROM from the working folder. So we're literally gonna type 99, hit enter. It is now compiling everything back together. Then it tells you where it saved it in the output underscore zip folder. Uh, it reminds you to do a wipe before you flash the ROM, which is always a good idea. And then we're gonna press enter to continue to bring us back to our menu screen. Okay, once we've compiled the ROM uh, that we're gonna use, we need to get it over to our Windows computer in order for us to put it onto our phone. To be honest, the easiest way to do this, albeit probably the slowest way, um, is to just go onto Firefox and go to a site like RapidShare. Um, in fact, a lot of the other sites don't work. I would use RapidShare personally if I were you. Uh, browse for the file itself. It's gonna be in your output underscore zip. It'll be called sign, and then usually the date, etc. unless you renamed it. And then click upload. And let it upload to RapidShare. Okay, once the file's been uploaded, it'll present you with a download link. You can either highlight that, copy it, and then email it to yourself, um, or you can just write it down, say, in Notepad uh, outside of Ubuntu, uh, and then we're gonna put it into a browser in our Windows so that we can download it. Okay, once we've copied it down, we can paste it into here. And then click Free User. Wait for the timer, and then download the file. Okay, while that's downloading, we're gonna plug in our phone. Pull this down, click mount. Okay, once you've downloaded the ROM back from RapidShare, we're going to grab it, and we're gonna put it on the root of our SD card of our plugged in phone. Remember that's on the root, so it's not inside any of these folders, just on the SD card itself. You'll see the path here is just the SD card, and wait for that to transfer. Okay, once that's done transferring, you can unplug our phone. Wait for it to prepare the SD card, and then we're going to turn it off. And once it's off, we're gonna turn it back on by holding down home and power. And keep holding it. Until we get to our custom recovery screen. Again, you have to have a custom recovery screen to do any of this. So if you haven't already rooted and loaded a custom ROM on your phone, uh, you should do that. Um, but now that we have our recovery screen, we're going to click backup and then backup. Your options may be different depending on what recovery image you have, but essentially they're going to be the same thing. And then we'll wait for it to finish its backup. Okay, once it says backup is complete, we can click back. And then we're going to do a wipe. Wipe data factory reset. Let it do that back and then we're going to flash zip from SD card and we're going to select the signed zip file that we just put on the SD card and click home and let it flash. Okay, once it says install from SD card complete, click reboot system now and wait for the phone to reboot and you're all set. Enjoy.